Right, in this video, we're going to set up Microsoft Visual Studio Code to work with your own SAP system. In my case, I'm using the SAP ABAP Developer Trial version 752 Service Pack 4. Your experience may vary depending on the version of your SAP system, so if you do run into any issues, please leave a comment down below and I'll help where I can. I personally use VS Code exclusively with all of my other projects, so it's just brilliant to know that I can now use it for my ABAP work as well. Everything you need to know is outlined in a fantastic blog post by Leon Hansen, and the link to that is in the description. In this video, we're essentially going to follow the same steps there. We're going to be configuring the SAP system as well as installing the four required Visual Studio Code extensions. Then we'll configure the frankly awesome ABAP Remote File System extension, which was written by a guy called Marcelo Urbani, which should then allow us to access our development objects. If you run into any technical issues with the ABAP Remote File System exen extension specifically, I recommend you raise it in the extensions GitHub issues page, um, which I'll also link in the description. So let's go ahead and configure our SAP system. We need to navigate to the SICF transaction code. And once you're in your services, you just go ahead, you can go ahead and execute um, as you need to. Once you're here, we need to expand default host, then SAP. Then we need to look for OData for SAP products, OPU. Then under OData, we then find SAP again. And at the top of the list, you should see ADT SRV, that's ABAP Developer Tools, the ABAP Developer Tools service. Um, you're going to go ahead and double click on that. And you can see all the settings here. Um, pretty much unchanged, I think. So what I've done here is I've actually added in my um, credentials and password and everything. You don't have to do this, um, I don't think, but I did it and it worked for me. So if you run into any issues, you can always try that. Um, but what we're doing here is if it's not running, we need to activate the service, in this case, our service is active, so we're fine. Um, then what we need to do is click on test service. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the, it's going to open up your browser with a URL. You can then take that, we're going to take that URL and then use it in the configuration file for the ABAP file system extension. So we can go ahead and click on test service. It's going to say we're trying to execute, blah, blah, blah. This is what we need up to 8,000. But um, what's important is we're going to allow it to do that. And it's going to open up a new window. And it's going to run that URL. You are supposed to get a response back that looks like this. If you don't, it means you have a configuration or permission issue somewhere in your SAP system. Um, so if you do run into any of any issues that on that side, um, please send a comment down below and then I'll, I'll see if I've run into it as well. But it's working for me, so that's fine. So now that we know the service is active and we've got the URL that we need um, and the URL is returning information, we can then go ahead and head back to Visual Studio Code and start installing our extensions from the marketplace. Now that we're back in Visual Studio Code, we're gonna go ahead and add those extensions. So you go ahead and click on the extensions button here. And under there, we can just search for ABAP. And in the marketplace, you should see um, the ABAP Remote File System extension. We're going to install that first, which will also install two or three other extensions um, as requirements, which is what we want. Um, once you've installed it, 
you can go ahead and click on the manage cog on the bottom right and then click on extension settings then we're going to click on edit and settings.json and you should see um, a bunch of settings at the top here the one we're interested in is the if it's not there you need to add it but the one that we're interested in is the abapfs.remote object in there we're going to add our server or servers um, if you've got more than one um, in our case it's the vhcal NPLCI, whatever that means that is our url that we picked up um, when we tested the service in the sap gui in sicf um, with the username and, and uh, password, client, language, and allow self-signed, which I believe has something to do with the SSL certificate. Um, so just make sure that's there uh, as well. Um, so once you've got this set up, you should be able to press F1. And I've already got it here and recently used, but you can search for ABAP and you should get ABAP FS connect to an app app system you can then click on that and if you receive an error message it'll be at the bottom right here um, in my case it's it's already installed so it, it's working fine for me but you shouldn't see an error message which means it's installed successfully and you should see a little app fs icon the right hand side here uh, with your transports if it's blank and you don't see anything Go ahead and restart VS Code. And once you've restarted, you should find a new workspace with your ABAP system here. And if you expand it, you should see your uh, local uh, developer package here. Um, and underneath that, you should see, um, well, everything you've been working on. And I think any other developer has been working on as well. Uh, depending on which package you look at. So let's create something new. To do that, you can right click on your um, local developer package, for example. Then you click on ABAPFS create object and it'll follow the instructions from the top here. So we're going to just create a simple program and we'll call it Z underscore test underscore um, ABAP FS descriptions, some description, and we can go ahead and press enter. And there you are. You uh, can now go ahead and start coding um, in VS Code, um, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, so if you do find any error messages down here and you're not sure what they are, comment down below. Um, you can also head on out again to the um, GitHub issues page for this extension, which, which again is in the description uh, to raise anything there. So please do leave a comment down below um, if you want. And as always, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.